with a drunken sailor, what will we do with a drunken sailor? What will we do with a drunken sailor early in the morning? Way hey, and up she rises, way hey, and up she rises, way hey, and up she rises early in the morning. Shave his belly with a rusty razor, shave his belly with a rusty razor, shave his belly with a rusty razor early in the morning. Way hey, and up she rises, way hey, and up she rises, way hey, and up she rises early in the morning. We'll put him in a long boat till he's sober, put him in a long boat till he's sober, put him in a long boat till he's sober.
Hello everyone, my name is Nopad Anon, and today I'm going to be writing a game. So, what are we doing today? Today we're going to be working on Project Deep Sea, as, as we have been for the past, uh, this last stream actually. And I actually did a lot of work in between uh, today and last stream. Um, you may be wondering, Notepad, what'd you work on? Uh, don't mind this autism, I'll get to that later. Well, I worked on... Da, 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 da. Uh, I got to playing the game, making a character... Da, 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 skills, uh, personality skills. Making a witch. Added these two images. Uh, this is Bloody Mary, and I can't remember her name, but that's the Candy Witch, and that's the Gore Witch. Uh, that is Chomaki's... One of her familiars, never talked about. Just clean some things up here to make things prettier and nicer. Added, put the magic set down here. I also changed the numbers around, which get five times their spirit plus 20. So if I plug the numbers a little bit on it, if you have a five in spirit, you're going to have 45 mana. Now, 45 mana may seem like a lot, but I want to get into how mana actually works. And with spells, I'm pretty sure spell system works. But I'll get to that in a minute. And, but familiars actually have a lot less. So if you have 5 spear for a familiar, that means you have only 20 mana. Which is nothing, really, at the end of the day. But there's a point for that. A familiar is supposed to be casting a lot more support spells that aren't technically as expensive as damage spells in the slightest. So that's kind of the, uh, the catch there. The, the bonus points that you don't have to really worry about. So... And I also had to put in this little section down here. Magic is based off the domain of the caster, unless certain items are equipped or skills learned from those who study other domains. All energy, all everything is considered neutral. You are hitting someone with just raw magic, rather than the specific kind of magic. The witch, however, is always having using their domain. Which is very important when you're saying, oh hey, this enemy is... Resistant to fire. Well, if I'm the fire witch, obviously my spells are not going to be very useful However, I'm the water witch all my spells are going to be very useful because I can put out fire. So that's kind of the Back and forth there, especially when you start getting into the otter domains where it's like, oh, hey everyone I'm the candy witch. It's like What do you mean all my spells have to be candy based? <laughs> it's, or your know, sweetness based so and I wanted to put in a point where this like witches can technically learn things outside of their domain, but it's just harder for them. And familiars kind of can learn anything. How I plan on doing this is you can increase your spirit, or you can just have a flat amount of mana or HP without increasing any of your attributes. So, so it's like, oh, I want 10 mana for my level up. That's what I want. That's completely valid. Because I'm... I want to make sure that you can play the character you want, and if you want to play a casting familiar, you can. It's just not going to be as efficient as playing a witch. So, uh, we got that. Now, dispositions. I had this idea kind of as a revelation on the way to grabbing lunch one day, and I was like, wait a second. One of the big things about Wadanhara and the Okagam universe in general, really, is that characters are screw-ups, mess-ups, and generally are failures of humanity in one way or another, but they're flawed but because of their personalities. Wadanahara herself does things because she's an empath. She is someone who cares a lot about other people and often throws herself into horrifying situations that usually hurt her more than anything. Why? Because that's who she is. That's her disposition. That's how she acts. So what I did was I took the use the 16 personalities thing. I can't remember the exact. Um, you've seen them before with the little people, and usually people make fun of it because it's not that accurate. But I took that and edited it around for six, uh, 15, I believe. Not 16. Because I took one out because I'm like, this has nothing to do. But effectively... Your disposition affects how you gain and lose trauma. What trauma is, is my compromise on health. For mental health. It's not exactly sanity, it's not a corruption, it's just how much trauma you can take before you break, you snap and go banana-rama insane. So, to go through them all, 
Adventurers, they're the kind of people who want to go out and explore new things, do new things, and generally are a uh, happy-go-lucky person. They're the ones who are always going out. They gain trauma if they stay stationary for too long. If you get stuck down on some place and you're just like, oh, well, we want to you know, stay here for a long time, Adventurers are going to get iffy. They're going to... Uh, also, ASMR me uh, tearing my coffee open. Uh, oh, beautiful sound, I know, I'm sorry. Uh... They're going to get a little antsy. They're going to get a little bit more annoyed. They want to go out and do things. And they lose trauma if they discover new things. So, so as long as they're traveling around, an adventure is going to kind of not have to worry about rapidly you know, gaining too much trauma. Because they're going to be hemorrhaging it. They're just like, as long as they're moving, they're fine. But there could be a problem if you get stuck in a single area for a long time. Architects. Architects plan for things. They're the ones. They're if you want to play an architect character, uh, you are the player who is like, okay, guys, let's spend the first hour of session coming up with the plan, and then they never follow through with the plan. You want people to follow through because you actively gain trauma if everything goes to hell. If you're forced to improvise, you do not want to improvise with them. But that's their personality. Um, assistants. Pretty much always there to help. Commanders are the you know, basic leaders, lead from the front. And pretty much what I wanted to do for a lot of these is uh, get across the idea that they're not mutually exclusive. That they some interact well with each other, others don't interact at all with each other. Like daredevils, uh, where are you? Oh yeah, daredevils gain trauma if they're first to be a part of a safe plan or low effort endeavors. Guess what the architect's going to be wanting to do? Low effort plans that or safe things. The architects and daredevils do not get along very well, but that's the point. You don't want them to get along because that's different personalities. There are people who clash. There are people who get mad at each other. You have character development there because, hey, what happened if we eventually do end up enjoying each other's company? Or, hey, I need to get you out of your comfort zone, architect. And I need you to play things safe sometimes, Daredevil. And you know, you learn and you grow as people. That's kind of the point of these. It's to disposition and give you, the player, a little bit of assistance when it comes to making your own, when playing your character out a little bit more. Uh, normally, I'm not all for uh, what I call role-playing mechanics. Uh, for a few reasons. One, I think it kind of takes away some of the agency that some players like. Uh, because sometimes people like to make stupid choices. Sometimes people play the char play themselves rather than the character, and they want to make sure that it's their thing to do, and not like, oh, well, I, ha I have to play a Daredevil because that's the most optimal choice, or I have to play a Debater because that's the most optimal choice. No. I'm not usually in favor of them, but for this one, I felt it was appropriate due to the story and how I'm handling trauma. So, if we go down further... Also, I use Lisa quite often. That's Carp. Carp and Lisa, Brad and Carp, uh, because Carp is best boy. And I did use him in my party for Lisa. I used Mad Dog instead of him. Uh, there's Goose. Don't trust Goose. So, basic health. I actually stole this from Monster Girl Adventures for two reasons. One, because I felt that it was probably the best way of handling it. Not just a flat HP amount, and it also gave me the ability to implement some of the grittier points of combat that I wanted, as well as have the, uh, how to best word this, it was the have my cake and eat it situation, being this, like, I don't need to worry about limb damage or anything like that, as well as I don't need to really have to focus on, uh, anything like, um, and it's also it's heavy enough that I can actually do things like gore mechanics and bleeding and really severe damage while also implementing the fact that it's a little bit easier to do without having to worry about a lot of things. So it was kind of the best of both worlds. I did implement the pass out mechanic uh, because I really like the pass out mechanic because it's very easy to work with and it's the, oh now I'm about to die, I'm passing out now, Lamau. Uh... I encourage everyone who doesn't have the pass out mechanic implement it in your game, which is the please save me mechanic, because I'm because I'm a player and I am dumb. If you have spin down at least. Uh, one thing to note about healing, 
Uh, witches heal incredibly slowly. They only heal at a rate of two health a day. While familiars heal at a rate of the witch's spirit plus four. So if the witch has negative three spirit, which is the dumbest shit you can do, uh, they're only gonna, they're going to be healing one a day. However, at chief, at the highest, you're going to be healing nine health a day, which is insane because you can heal yourself incredibly quickly. That's kind of the point. The witch isn't supposed to get hurt. You are to protect her. You are supposed to throw yourself into the fire to make sure that she is alive. Because you are dumb. You are a familiar. You are her protector. Even down here. Like, witches can technically, if they have really low bod, like negative three bod, uh, have one in all of these. So if she takes uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh yeah, she takes uh, seven or more damage. She will instantly die. Uh, oh goodness, everyone's... People are pinging me, oh no! Oh no! So yeah, it's very, very easy to die. See, I don't know. Uh, if you want to be honest, sleep, I have no goddamn idea how familiars work. And I've looked. I've looked everywhere for information about familiars. Like... Like, are they, like, just friends? Are, like, is it, like, an occupation? Is it, like, a bound thing? Like, a traditional familiar idea? I don't know. There's literally nothing. Uh, and I have, even have to implement the, oh, yeah, lick my blood, Lamau, and become Superman. I have to put that in somewhere. I have no idea where. But that's just something I have to worry about, Lamau, because this world works on its own, you know, crazy logic sometimes, but... That's the fun part of this entire endeavor, right? Please tell me, right? But you are accurate somewhat, though. Uh, a familiar is just a witch simp. And in what of the hard case, two of them are. Like, legitimately. It's hilarious. But, uh... Now we get to mental trauma. Now, mental trauma was weird. Pretty much everyone has a trauma gauge from 0 to 10. 0 means... <laughs> thanks, sleep. Thanks. Um... Everyone has a trauma from 0 to 10. 0 means you are in perfect phys you know, mental health and you're fine. Everything is okay and you're not losing your goddamn mind. At 10, you're effectively on the verge of mental collapse. So, effectively what this means is once you hit 10, you start exemplifying your disposition. You go 250% on your disposition. If you're an empath, you're throwing, yourself, you're throwing your life away for other people. If you're a defender, you're going to throw yourself in the middle of conflict to stop people. If you're a daredevil, that mountain, I can jump off it, Lamau. But that's kind of the point behind it, is that you as a character are, your disposition's broken. You can also be molded a lot easier. I'm going to have to put in the relationship mechanic, but the idea is other people are going to start manipulating you. And it's very easy and a broke, someone with a broken disposition, and that's how they reduce it. And I use, uh, Spoiler alert for Wadanahara and the Deep Blue Sea, everyone. But there are three core endings, three main endings: Red Witch, the uh, Red Sea Witch, Blue Sea Witch, and the True Ending. The Red and Blue Sea Witch are what happens when you hit max trauma and and they do something. Red Sea Witch is when someone inf influences you. In this case, Sal, where. He influences her, and she goes crazy and joins him and the Sea of Death. Let's be honest here, yes. Like, I, I know, but yes. Like, he didn't, I never said it, but I, I know. I know. I know the true true. But... Sal influences her and changes her disposition to make him friendly and her dislike everyone else. That's how that's how she fixed that's how he fixed her trauma. On the other hand, for the Blue Sea Witch ending, she kills herself to save everyone. She follows through with her disposition 110% and dies for it. For the true ending, she manages to fix her trauma right at the very end. Forcing you know, her her boyfriend slash familiar slash a lot of other things. Uh, yeah, we don't talk about uh, some catchy. I think is his full name. Yeah, we don't talk about him. 
she effectively heals her trauma just long enough to get fucking stabbed. And from there, she manages to fix herself. Then that's the actually the CG at the end of the uh, true ending. Uh, that is the Red Sea and Red Sea Witch ending. So overall, that's how I want to get it how to work. And I actually put a, an entire different side note for it because it was such a bizarre mechanic and bizarre idea. I get one of those, like, it's very roleplay focused, but welcome to having a very light game. On, and with the GNS thing, it's very on the GN scale, not really S at all. But, uh, what else did I implement? What else did I implement? Nothing much else besides that. That was a, a fun and exciting adventure, and I really hated all of it. But I did it. It's done. That section, anyway. Which brings me to the witch and magic. So, under deep sea autism, I wrote all of this out, as well as notes for later. So, what do I mean by create a spell? So, creating a spell is fairly simple but complex, depending on how you see it. Pretty much the high, uh, lower tier magician, lower tier people don't have to worry about it, but like the witch is going to have to know this system f decently well. So, depending on your domain, everyone starts at domain zero, unless you're the witch, in which case you start at domain three. You can learn different domains, you can learn effectively different abilities to do things. However, I digress. Your, applica your application is what you are doing with the spell. Such as doing damage, enchanting something, healing someone, debuffing someone, removing a status, buffing, movement, protection, creation, or control. That all, all over your options. So our example spell, we're going to be using our gold witch, the IRS witch, who's going to use protect self. Potency is pretty much how strong it is. What the die is being rolled for damage, how many or how many rounds it's going to last in addition, and the mana cost. The range is how far you can cast it. So I, I asked, I actually asked the commissioner, and they said I use theater of the mind mostly. So I'm using SD proper. I'm going to be using Project Grug's version of SD because I actually like that version a little bit, and I can fold it into combat pretty easily. So, got bada bing bada boom. So the range is this how far away from it the caster can actually use it. Is it one SD away? Is it seven SD away? Or is it literally right next to them? While the radius is how far it emanates from the from the target. And I have radius and aim. What do I mean by radius is let's say I throw it two SD away and I have radius one. It's going to affect one SD and three SD and two SD as one range. However, if I do something like aimed, I can just aim it in a different direction. So if I throw it at two, it can go to three. I'm going to have to put in the notes for like, if you want to use this for a grid, it's pretty much just being able to move things around. It's pretty simple. But aiming, it, radius is cheaper than aiming. You may be like, what, your notepad isn't aiming technically less. The idea is that you're focusing a little bit more because radius doesn't care about who's in it. It just happens to everything in that radius. So if you cast protect on someone with a radius of two and the enemy's in there, that enemy is going to get protected. Same as you cast fireball on someone and they're in and you have an ally in it, they're going to take the damage. It was whatever's in that radius. And that's all that matters. Duration. Exactly as it sounds, is how how long it lasts, how many turns. Uh, I do have six plus eighteen plus because I keep it pretty simple. One three two six three, just one to three ratio there. Now delivery is touch. You have to touch the target. Cast is you can have to be within range of the target. Remote is a caster or another character can detonate it. And trigger is a spell will activate when a trigger is activated. So. You can do some things with triggers that are a little bit interesting if you really want. Let's say every time I open this door, I, you know, I, the person gets knocked back five feet. Boom, done. Don't have to worry about it. That's the trigger. Open door, knock back. But if I want to, let's say, 
when I walk into a room, the door opens automatically. That's another trigger spell. That's the trigger. You have to have that. Once it's done, it's good. So intricacy is pretty much how to cast... The less intricacy you have, the less it's actually going to cost us to cast the spell, but the more penalty you gain, more intricacy, more, more mana the cost, but higher bonus. And depending on how much mana you actually use depends on the complexity, which is the target number you have to hit to cast the goddamn spell. So this may seem very complicated. However, I'm going to use our example spell up here. So, our example spell is our gold, the IRS Witch, you casting Protect Self, Potency of D6, she has a range of 0, a radius of 0, a duration of 4 turns, touch delivery, and has an intricacy of negative 3. So she has a target number, if we add up all these, so it's going to be 6 plus 12, like own uh, 6 plus 12, which is 18, minus 3. So she's going to have to spend 15 mana and have a target number, if we go all the way down here, of 15 to successfully cast that spell on herself. That's it. That's how you make a spell. Nice and easy. And what I'm what I'm going to have to do in this section is I'm going to write a point, a point saying this like note down spells that you are going to keep casting endlessly. You don't need to build every single goddamn spell every time. No. Write this spell down as, you know, protection of gold, target number 15, 15 mana. You already know what it does. You know how it works. That's how you do it. But say she wants to enchant something, like I'll right off the cuff, boom, 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 boom. You're done. You got it. It's good. You have what you need. You have what you want. And you can just do it. So, welcome to uh, the, the wonderful world of autism with no pet and not when it comes to making spells. So, let's write the spell system now. Let's write this down. Uh, the witch and Matt. So, if I can click on the right thing. So, the witch and magic. We're allowing them to perform feats of the supernatural, which is our, our one of the most competent individuals when it comes to, to the manipulate, manipulation of the arcane which allows them to tap into magic that is difficult for even the most experienced non non-witch uh, caster caster wit non-witch uh, non-witch magician that's a really weird thing to say <laughs> but what about what in the heart is dad what in the heart is dad was god and uh so yeah we don't talk about what in the heart is dad or technically she was born from an egg it just works bro it just works Okay, how do I want to word this? So, okay, we're going to do the first section is the domains. Domains of magic. A domain, a domain of mag magic is a specific... Uh, vein of energy that the cast that the caster is 
not the action, what I'm going to call it is the mag no, that the character is using to manipulate the world around them. Should actually check who's all in chat. Oh wow, we got everyone in chat today. I had to make a magic a specific vein of energy that the character is using to manipulate the world around them. Uh, normally, a character normally a character does not have a specific. A specific domain assigned assigned to them instead using the natural natural force of magic simply referred to as neutral energy I thought about being creative and like calling it something special but uh, neutral energy is the easiest see if I was if I was being, uh, if, I, if, if this wasn't for a commission, what I would do is I'd probably call it Arcus, and I would just make this the Bastard Bond's magic system, but I can't do that, because uh, I, I think I think Knight would not appreciate me making the, the very gay Bara game magic system in this game. I think that would be a no-no on my book. Actual force of magic, simply referred to as neutral energy. When a character has access to a domain, they are allowed. They are allowed to flavor, flavor their ma their magic, and their spells, spells around the specific domain. And causing devastating effects. However, each domain, each domina, each domain has, let's see, F4, has F4. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So let's see, if we have 10, that means, yeah. uh, let's say, has two, has two applications, the method, uh, the uh, method to the use of a spell that they are unable to to properly properly employ properly employ due to the domain specific nature on the other on the other hand the domain also has two applications that they are considered proficient in And reduce the mana cost by by five. Yes. So let's say, for example, our gold witch. Our gold witch. She cannot use uh, healing, obviously, and she cannot use creation. Uh, that's a no no that's a no no however she's very good at protecting she's very good at controlling that's the entire point that she can control control gold but she cannot heal anyone really and she cannot create gold yeah, so that that works. I'll reduce the mana cost by five. Okay, so yeah, that works actually. Not flawless, but it works.
uh, can use every application, uh, a specific domain can use every application, but cannot, but cannot affect, uh, okay, actually, can use every application, but does not possess, does not possess any advantages or disadvantages. Each domain is ranked from zero to five. Actually, each domain is ranked from one to five, representing how, powerf how powerful the character is in that specific domain. Familiars start start with zero. It, in a domain, start start with zero in a domain, as they do not possess, as they do not possess natural magic. While the witch, while the witch begins begins play with three in their domain, in their chosen in their chosen domain. Yeah, that works. Oh. Mm. I might have to do something right off the bat where you can get magic as a familiar early on, but... Again, it's one of those weird situations where it's like, the only familiar we see in the game that knows magic is a very old familiar. None of the other familiars use magic. That's noticed. So it's just like, can familiars even use magic? Is she just special? Because she does have, like, superpowers or something, and she was, like, familiar to a fucking god. Like, what's the what's the dealio here? And so that's kind of my, my compromise a little bit there. I might ask the uh, commissioner how they would like to handle this. Would they like familiars to have access to magic right away? If that is the case, what I may do is that they start with a domain of one in the witches, uh, a specific domain. So, for example, if you're the gold witch, you'd start with one in gold, which isn't very good, by the way. Because that's, you don't get that much. <laughs> which begins playing with three in their chosen domain. Uh, a character can, actually, what I should say, a familiar or other other magician can can use the neutral can use the neutral force equal to their highest domain equal to their highest domain but a witch must always employ her domain but a witch must always employ her domain okay perfect Wow, that's a lot of red text. Specific. Specific. Uh, character does not have a domain assigned to them. Applications. The domain's nature. Employed to the domain's nature. Proficient. Character without a domain can use every application. That domain, I keep adding the word specific because that's how I type because I am a complete goddamn moron. You may be surprised, but I literally have subhuman intelligence at some points. But you get used to it. I'm also checking Discord constantly because I keep getting pings on people and it's like, oh golly gee willikers. Hippity hoppity, there is no god here. Okay, so we've got the domains of magic, we've got how I want to do those, so do we now employ. Actually, what I can do. 
We'll put that right here. We want to make that Roboto. We want to make that 12. Uh, table properties, table alignment, center, middle. Actually, let's put it on the left. Middle align everything. Maximum to be spent. Perfect. So if you see, you can't really spend that much mana early on. And that kind of sucks for some of the bigger spells. If you want to do like big, big spells, it's really hard to do it, do any of these until you hit like three to five. Like the witch is going to be the only one who can actively use magic pretty reliably early on. Again, I might give options to change that, but that's kind of up to the commissioner of how they want to handle that. So I will be asking them. If they do not give me a response, I'm going to cry. So, uh, creating this. So, creating a spell. Deep Sea use, uses a system of creating a custom spell. Custom spell to the cast. to the character's wishes. Character's wishes, as long as they have the necessary MP as well as skill to actually use the spell actually the actually uh, as well as the ability to actually uh, cast actually cast the spell and not have it sputter When creating a spell, follow the, follow the following. Uh, consult the following. Consult the following charts, and employ. Uh, yeah, consult the following charts. Who's ready for some good old-fashioned? Fucking notes. Who's who's ready for, for tables? I'm ready for tables. Cause yeah, tables. Every day we stray further from God's light. God's light is just this table. Uh, let's put that. 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 Select everything. Table properties. Black on black, center, middle. So let's. I just realized that you're not in alphabetical order. Oh God. Data, create filter. A to Z. This kid's what I like to call Notepad being very specific about his alphabetizing. I don't always alphabetize it, but there comes a point where it's just like I must to make sure everything looks pretty. Okay, so bestow buff, bestow buff for, dura for duration, control an object with, within the dura domain for the duration, control an object within the domain. Create an ob, uh, create an object in the in the domain for for the duration. Yield damage equal to potency uh, for duration. For duration, bestow bestow buff for the duration. Enchant and give magical property to an I. Uh, for in either give it give magical property to an to an item for duration of potency strength heal heal damage equal to potency and movement immediately move in a direction equal to 
to range, attack block damage equal to potency, move a curse slash buff potency for potency equal remaining duration. Okay, okay, okay. Consult the following charts. All right, application. Application. That's three. Application is what the spell is going to be actual, actually doing and does not cost mana to add. However, every spell, every spell can only have, actually, let's see, and does not cost mana f for the first application. Every Every subsequent application costs an addition costs an additional five, five mana to add. Actually, yeah, no, five mana to add. So, for example, I want to heal and buff someone. That's going to cost me zero plus five. That's going to cost five mana to actually do both of those. And I'm going to have to worry about both of those things when I'm adding the potency and stuff together. Now. If you look here, if I'm level 1, I'm already done with my spell. It's just done. Because I can only spend 5 mana. So you don't really want to do this until, again, you hit level 13, level 3 or even level 5. Because you, when you can spend as much mana as you want. That's the point of that. Like, you have the option, but doing so isn't really effective. And next, potency. Potency reflects how strong or weak the how strong the spell is. Spell is either increasing the die value, either increasing the die value of the of the of the spell, or adding addition or adding additional rounds to its duration. Here is actually, because I thought about doing this before, but I'm going to put it here actually. Potency number of number of dice. I can cut this section. Actually, what I can do, cut you entirely. Actually, uh, insert column to the left. Uh, potency uh, number number of dice uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 actually what I should say is mm, Do I want to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? So if I want to uh, actually even really use Do I actually use this at all? change that duration and equal remaining duration. So you have to spend duration points to do it, so damage equal to potency, heal damage equal to potency. Okay, so if I do that, what I can do now is cut the potency round section. 
I want to delete this column. Uh, increasing the die value of the spell. So either increasing the number of dice rolled. Actually, it reflects how strong the spell is. The character can buy a number of dice for number of dice and the size size of the of the dice independent independently independently from one another uh, to determine the overall power of the spell so independently from one another what i'm going to do is put a footnote right there i want to put insert footnote uh, for example, a 40, a 46 spell costs 9 for the 4, plus 6 costs 9 plus 6 equal 15 mana to fully cast. Quite a lot. But a 6d4 is going to cost, let's see, a 6d4 is going to cost 15 plus 3 equal 18 mana. The goal is to find what is most comfortable and effect and effective for the spell in question. Uh, let's see. Actually, let's do number of dice, uh, size of dice. Black on black, middle, we want to do center alignment, and we're going to put a picture right. Actually, what's going to be the next section? potency oh it's range can I fit the entire range table in here yes I can so that's what I'm going to do actually Let's set range right here put that in the middle table properties table alignment left vertical alignment middle Range. A uh, heading three. Vasalati da. Let's check Discord again. Everything's on fire. Everyone's sad. It's pretty Gucci. So if anyone has any questions, do not hesitate to ask. I'm going to be here for a little while debating with myself. So uh, asking questions helps me as well as you in case you have any and any problems or concerns or you don't quite understand what's going on. Uh, again, ask and you shall receive answers. Even if you ask me completely random ask questions, I will still answer them because that's that's what I do. Oh! Yeah, my back isn't supposed to go that direction. There's my neighbor without pants on again. Why? Why do you do this to me? It's, it's the afternoon. Stop that. Range. Uh, range, ref range reflects how far away this spell is going to reach once it is ca once it's cast. The further away the spell is, spell is, the m more mana it takes to actually employ. There's an advantage and disadvantage to living next to the hospital, I swear. <laughs> that hurts me physically and emotionally, sleep. Don't worry. <laughs> Oof. Oof. <laughs> Oof. 
Don't worry, my, my feelings aren't hurt, they're just shattered. But it's... One of the issues with this is that there's a lot of moving parts for something very simple, but every single system I looked for this, it was the exact same way. Like, you, you think, oh, well, I want to make a spell. I want to cast Firebolt. But, like, it's amazing how complex a simple thing like that is. Like, Firebolt, oh, yeah, it's, so what, it's D&D &D 5e, cast Firebolt, I do, what, it's like 2d10 damage or something, 2d8, something like that. Boom, done. Don't gotta worry about it. But you end up having to think about it a little bit more, and it's like, okay, I want to cast Firebolt. Okay, what's the range? Well, it's, I think, 30 feet. Okay, I'm going to cast that. It's also fire. Okay, so that's another thing I have to keep in mind. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, it's also just a cantrip. It doesn't actually take, no, it doesn't even you know, cost anything. Yeah, no, trust me, I looked at Shadowrun spells, and I'm like, hippity hoppity, nobody rope, no, nobody ropeity. Uh, <laughs> it's usually systems that do this are incredibly crunchy. Like Ars Magica was another was one that came up a lot. And if they're not crunchy, they're very specific on how they handle it. I know. Uh, I love Barbarians of Lemuria. I think it is one of the best games I've ever written. No, I've, no, I've ever written, obviously. Uh, I've ever read because it is a very good game. And it does things very simply and very elegantly. Its magic system is trash, because it's very conformed to that uh, setting, that sword and sorcery setting. So it doesn't really, it has like a, ch like a chapter, like half a chapter dedicated to it, being this like, yeah, this is what happens if you have magic. But they don't really even want you to use magic, because that's not the point. Shadowrun, Old Shadowrun, like, 3rd edition was actually pretty simple, but, like, 4th edition, 5th edition kind of really amped up the complexity and number of dice and stuff that came into it. Uh, then 6th edition happened, and, um, 6th edition never happened, by the way. Just rem a reminder to everyone involved, 6th edition Shadowrun doesn't exist. It's a, just a delusional fever dream everyone's having currently, and it, it'll end eventually, um... And it'll be amazing once uh, Evil Hat, uh, not, it's not, Evil, not even Evil Hat, once Catalyst Games uh, realizes that uh, they forgot 6th edition and just immediately skip over to 7th. Uh, we'll never have to worry about it again. Right? Right. But, I digress. Unfortunately. But again, it's a delusional fever dream that isn't real. <laughs> I see you're a smart man, Sleep. I see you're a very intelligent man. See, I actually kinda liked fifth edition. It it, it was it was quirkier, don't get me wrong. It was very it was different than the other editions, but I feel they did some good things with it. Not so, they also did a lot of dumb things, but they I think they did it okay at first, but then like the latter half of that run, things got a little bit uh, chunky and a little bit weird. 6th uh, edition has just been a uh, rollicking good time of people wanting to kill themselves. I remember when it came out, the Shadowrun thread was just, okay everyone, press F for Shadowrun, we're done. We're, we're hopping ship to Cyberpunk. And then uh, Cyberpunk uh, Red never is getting released, by the way. Fun fact, everyone. We don't need Cyberpunk. I want Cyberpunk so badly. <laughs> It'll never happen, though. I'm so sad. Ah, uh, we'll slap an image right there. Do we have enough room? Yeah, we have just, en we have just enough room down here. Jesus. It's not going to be a lot, but I can make it work. <laughs> And now we're moving to Radius. Oof, okay, Radius. Radius. Radius and Tendendia. Radius of the, sp of the spell dictates how far it emanates from from the original casting location. 
from the religion from the religion uh from the point of the point of the spell there are two methods to two methods to radius radius uh, radiating and aimed radiate radiating goes all around goes all around the area goes all around the area while aimed is specific is directly targeted in a specific direction radiating is cheaper overall but can affect allies and enemies the same way while a well, aimed is. What I should do is put aim to methods. Well, aimed is easier. Well, is more expensive to hopefully avoid friendly fire or or helping the enemy. See, that was always one of my favorite things. I'm, I kind of stole that idea from um, my probably my favorite game of all time, uh, being the wonderful uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, the original, not Advanced. I didn't like Advanced as much, but uh, I loved Final Fantasy Tactics. It's still one of my favorite games of all time. And uh, Ramza did nothing wrong. Delita did everything wrong. And uh, don't trust, don't trust anyone. That, that that was a babby notepad's first introduction to why why the Catholic Church is bad. <laughs> it's like, wait a second, they're covering up demons. My God, more <laughs> covering up demons more likely than you think. Also, begin my amusing introspection of how like ninety five percent of JRPGs do involve killing God in some way. Like it's a strange thing they constantly focus on. Of like, okay, guys, okay, Wonder Team, you know, let's use the power of friendship. By the way, let's kill Judeo Christian God now. I'm just like, why? <laughs> like, <laughs> this escalated. I thought we were going on a happy go lucky adventure, and now we're off to you know murder a deity. Well, crap. Is that just a Japanese thing? That's one thing I never quite understood. Uh, can I shrink this table down? Mm. I can shrink this table down just a smidge. Now, uh, anal notepad would be, would try to make everything exactly specific, uh, which he's going to do now. Let's see, we want column width, which we're going to make this 1.4. Table properties, column width 1.4. There we go, perfect. This is, this kids is why we don't, why me making tables is a bad thing for everybody involved. All right, so we are going to put Oh, can I put duration on? No, I'm not going to put duration on here. This is radius is going to be its own thing. I'm going to have a big blast spell picture right there. Okay, uh, can put duration right here. Uh, duration. Duration affects how long the spell affects last after it has been cast well, longer spells require more mana more mana up front up front to cast however it is cheaper than recasting casting the same spell multiple times Now the thing is as well is I do not specify for damage that you can't just put duration on it. 
or you, they, someone just instantly takes damage. So if you do like, oh, if they're going to take a D6 damage, but I'm putting Duration 3 on it, by the way, they're going to be taking D6 damage every turn. So Fire Mages can actually do a lot of uh, tricky business with that, and I encourage people to make interesting, weird spells. Because that's the point of the system, is to allow people a lot of freedom on how they want to handle things. But keep it constrained enough that people don't immediately just press the I win button and kill everything in a 15 mile radius. How many... Oof, we're at 24 pages already. Joyzy. Joyzy. We're not even a quarter. We're not even... Click, click the black, oh my god. I like this new mouse. It is, um, interesting, to say the least, at some times. Some times. Yeah. Interesting at points, as it likes to, every now and again, fight me. Delivery method. The, deliver the delivery is how the caster mu must employ the spell. Let's employ the spell. And where they must they must be to actual actually employ its uses. Character outside of outside of delivery cannot cast the spell successfully. Yeah, cast the spell successfully. All right, delivery method. Caster must touch the target, be within range of the target. Caster, or other character may detonate the spell at will. Probably call that detonation. And then pull my devil trigger which that is one game system that I would love to see I would love to see a very cinematic combat system like devil may cry I would love to see that all I know one game who has attempted to do that so far and there was a magical burst but they went into that game and going for that so I'm like, mm, mm, come on, come on, give me something. Come on, why is there no D DMC? Give me that DMC game. You know you can do it. And I don't want to be the one to do it, because it sounds like a pain in the ass. <laughs> but if someone pays me some dollar dues, don't worry. My complete lack of morals would let me do it. Uh, probably slap an image right there. Put the delivery myth. Actually, I'm going to put an image right there. We're going to want to put you. Uh, table properties. We're going to do a line center. See, the one thing I do dislike immensely about uh, Google Drive, about the Google system in general, outside of all its other quirks, uh, I will call them quirks, uh, in the C, is. I cannot put two tables right next to each other. So I can't put this table next to this table. Like, that's just not a thing. And you may be saying, well, just put columns. Uh, columns and tables do not work together. They fight one another horribly. It's like, oh, God. Oh. Sweet mother of God, my back. Why do I keep doing this to myself? I am a boomer. Big boomer energy, I guess. Oh, I'm hurting myself. I also asked how to do this to people on the TTRPG design and playtesting server. And it's funny because they're just like, we're summoning. We're summoning. We're summoning. I, I am the youngest boomer, and it sucks. 
I don't even drink Monster Energy. But it's like, oh god. But, yeah, no, fun fact about summoning, uh, screw summoning in any game. This fucks summoning. summoning. There's no good system that handles summoning. If you can find a system that handles summoning well, cool, use it. I don't want, uh, uh, no. <laughs> it's spooky. I, uh, there's a reason I'm thinking about making my own game with summoning as, like, a base thing in it, because I want a system that does it. Well, and there's no good way of doing it currently. And they're like, what about Anima? Anima's its own thing. Anima is not a game, it's a spreadsheet. A very aggressive, angry spreadsheet that speaks Spanish at you and asks for your lunch money. Intricacy. The intricacy, intricacy of the sp spell allows it to... Intricacy of the spell... Allows the... Well, the caster to employ additional additional steps and procedures to do quick do quickly or slowly to slowly cast the cast the cast the spell in a more efficient or less efficient manner. How? When the caster is using their spell, they may take a take a penalty to the cast and reduce the total amount of mana mana employed. However, they can also increase the amount amount of mana used to gain a bonus to the check to the uh, to the check to cast to the casting check I've also heard a lot of people say I like over explain things at some points and I'm gonna give you a little reason why I over explain things because people are stupid <laughs> And I, I've run into points where I don't like really in detail explain like every little piece, and people uh, people have made some very weird assumptions on some of my games of how it works. Like, well, obviously this is how it works. I'm just like, no, I don't know where you got that. If you look, read the entire book, that's a, not at it. That's not at all how it works. You're like, but I just assumed. I'm like, no. So I usually like spelling things out for people so they don't make those assumptions. Uh, my my biggest example of this was with Monster Girl Adventures, and one guy in his quest to add all his cool custom monsters to it, uh, resulting in horribly, horribly broken characters uh, that could instantly kill any other character in about half a second. And were impossible to kill because he just assumed that's how it worked. I'm like, no, <laughs> please, no. So, and the reason he thought that is because I didn't explicitly kind of point out how to make your own custom monsters. And eventually, I had to. I added a lot of his stuff anyway to the base game, but I had to kind of point out like, if you want to do this, take these ideas. And use it to do this. Do not add more than you think you need. Do not add a plus five. Add a plus one. <laughs> also, hello, new viewer. I don't know who you are, but welcome aboard. It has been... Oh! It has been an hour of me streaming and me looking at charts because I am the most interesting human being alive. I showed you my tables, answer me. Uh, what's the... Uh, 1.325... Uh, 1.325... There we go. Intricacy, and finally, the spell's complexity.
once the spell has been fully constructed. Constructed. The caster must make a speed make a speed check to successfully cast this cast the spell. This is referred to it as this is referred to as quote complexity. Hmm. Complexity which raises as more mana is spent. Actually, what I should say is more MP is spent on the spell in total. Mm, I don't have enough room. No. I've made a fundamental mistake. Okay, let's put that right there. Okay, put duration right there. Put delivery method right there. Put it. Can I put? No, I can't even fit intricacy there. Okay, put that right there. Duration. Put that. So pretty much have the same kind of setup here. Put the big spell right there. Another big boy right there. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna have to put complexity all by its lonesome. Braggle rock. Okay, cool. This is fine, this is cool. Alright, I should explain complexity as well. So, complexity, the entire point of this, actually what I should say is MP spent on spell, is to allow pretty much the more mana you spend, the more complex it's going to get, and that means the harder it is to actually cast. Which does mean that technically it lowers the complexity if you take a penalty to it. So it's like, oh, well, I'm just going to you know, jack down the bonus to like negative five all the time so I can save mana. Well, yeah, but you're taking a negative two to it. And it automatically, even if you're at max, max spirit, that's still a plus zero. And then it's just a flat d20 roll whether or not. And if you're trying to hit 10, that's a 50-50. You know, that's a immediately that becomes a little bit more complex than you think than you think it does. So you need to kind of balance out. You know, can I successfully hit this spell with my current attributes? Can I do this? Can I not do this? I may fix these numbers. Actually, when it comes to MP spent on the spell. But overall, I think this all this system does work, which actually does give me a side note. Uh, example spells using this system. From here, here I'm going to create three spells that employ the system. Employ the system. That can that can be easily applied. Easily applied to that. Oh yeah, and then play the system. And since I already have one, yep, but dee zip, but dee do. I can't sing that because that's kind of racist. Goal three protect cell potency D six. Radius zero, because it's only going to be affecting her. Duration four turns. Touch delivery. Equal fifteen mana T N fifteen. Range zero, touch delivery. And 
from there. Let's use fire four. Damaging. Damaging slash debuff. Five. Potency is going to be 2d4. Salt our notes here. Actually, I cancel that out so I don't worry about it anymore. 2d4, so that would be six in total. Range is going to be three. This is going to be six. Uh, radius is going to be zero. Duration is going to be two. Let's do fire rank point four. Gold rank three, just to make sure, because I'm using that rank three. Duration 2, so if we use Duration 2, that means it's going to cost 6 additional mana, and it's going to be a touch delivery, so 0. Actually, no, it's going to be a cast delivery. Cast delivery at 2. It's going to have intricacy of, intricacy of, let's say, negative two, so it's going to get extra negative intricacy, negative two, negative two. And in total, that's going to cost five, 11, 17, 23, 25, 23 mana. And if we go down here, complexity 23 mana means it's going to be a target number, TN25 with 23 mana. So the idea here is that you are lighting someone on fire for 2d4 damage two for two turns effectively uh, with a range of three so you can light someone on fire for two for two turns do 2d4 so effectively you're doing 44 damage uh, with a range of three and you're putting on the debuff as well. Actually, would I? Actually, you wouldn't add the debuff, would you? Because the debuff, you're not putting a debuff on anyone. You're just lighting them on fire with the duration. So that would just be zero. So if we reduce it by th five, that would go down to eighteen, and that would be a TN twenty instead. Yeah. Okay. So eighteen, eighteen mana. Actually, eighteen MP slash. Slash TN20. Even that seems a little high. Hmm. Jack down the numbers a little. I want. Hmm. Maybe I should jack down the numbers a little bit. Actually, let's do this instead. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So that would be instead of TN15. 15, 15 mana would be instead TN10. Because you're already spending mana that you already don't have a lot of, so you can't really do this endlessly. So, okay, I think that, I think that works a little bit more. So if you're not spending like an any at all, like you don't really have to make a roll for it, because it's not very complex in the slightest. But let's just do like the cheapest spell possible. So that would be neutral. Let's do neutral one. Uh, damaging. Actually, uh, let's do neutral one, heal zero, a uh, potency, a uh, one d4. An absolute d4 would be would be three. Okay, so potency one d4 would be three. Range of zero, zero. Radius zero, duration zero, uh, touch zero, intricacy. Uh, actually, 
then why don't you just do like negative five intricacy if it's a TN zero? Actually, no, you would, you would still need to roll because technically you could score a zero on it if you have low enough. If you have low enough, there's a chance. If you have, a, let's say, a three in spirit and you have a negative five, there's a, there's a distinct chance that you can actually roll zero, less than zero, and automatically fail the check, <laughs> fail something really easy like this. So, yeah. Uh, actually, let's do intricacy uh, zero, zero which results in a 3 MP spell, TN0. And literally all it does is heal 1d4 health. That is the bare minimum. It still costs mana to actually do. So, fun fact, everyone. That is the absolute most dumb, dumb, easy spell possible is that. Like, it does nothing. <laughs> Hitting someone or using an item is technically a better idea for that. Okay, cool. Because I like it when things turn out right. Insert table. Table, one by one. Control shift eight. I'm also going to make another side note right here. Also, another another weird, fun, exciting quirk about uh, Google Docs. You can't hit tab in side notes. That's why I always write them in uh, notepad. So, uh, side note. Note. Note down spells. A character slash player will most likely default to a few to a few key spells that they are comfortable with. Have them have them note them down. Down for quick use. No need to go through the, this process for every single spell. If they want to go through and change something, just edit. Let's edit some of their, their pre written spells to augment damage or add effects. However, the easier it is for them, the easier it is for you. It also allows players to better keep track of their abilities. There we go, note down spells. So, augment damage allows players. Okay, there we are. Okay, so the custom spell system is DONE. Let's see if... Oh, uh, no! Why are you like that? You are supposed to be three, not two. Roboto, 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 roboto. Perfect. All right, so the Witch and Magic. So we got all of that done. Gucci, 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 Gucci. So let's make you all go away now. Let's see. It is there. We've got some new people. You know what? Let's work on this section: relationships, and strings. Relationships and the strings. Now. Those who know various PBTA games probably know where I'm getting the idea of strings from, from Monster Art, I believe is the name. See, I like the idea of strings. I, I don't like Monster Hearts, personally. Uh, I feel it's a little bit too uh, wankery and trying a little bit too hard at some points. But I like the idea of strings, that you can be connected to someone, not necessarily out of like, oh, let's bang, but more like, hey, 
we're really good friends. Like, we're invested in one another. Or, hey, like, um, your success means I'm being successful. And I've used it for a few games. At least the concept of it. This game is going to be no different. However, I'm also going to be implying using a slightly different system for it. Uh, where are you? Morons with pedigrees. So, for those who don't know what Morons with Pedigrees is, aristocratic role-playing in the 18th century. It's about people being retarded. <laughs> and trying to effectively manipulate one another to higher and higher extremes. And let's see, assigned humors. Okay, so... This is what I'm looking for right here. This isn't actually a very large game. But what I want to use is something like this, the web. Who's screwing who? And we're going to go back to Project Deep Sea, eh, not the preliminary notes. But notes and such for later. Also, new people who are showing in, if you have any questions about things, feel free to ask. I'm always available. All right. So we're going to make this heading one. We're going to make this archivo. And we want to make you Roboto. And one of the key things with uh, Morons with Pedigrees is this, is the chart. So if we zoom in a little bit, pretty much the uh, entire idea is that every the players are not playing the main character. They are playing all the people around them. So... One of the example character ideas I ha you had is, let's say, the main character here. You know, you might be playing his best friend, but or you might be playing his sibling, who is also an officer. And so you may be playing these three characters right here, or you can be playing these three, or these three. So it's kind of like how you depend on how you build these can really depend on how the story is actually folded. What I want to do some for here is something very similar, which is going to be, uh, how to best word this? Let's just say a lot of things in Wadadahara and the Deep Blue Sea is based around Wadadahara. Every single character is within two steps of her. Every single one. And the only characters who are definitively not within, again, two steps of her become within two steps very quickly. So, what, are they, what do I mean by two steps? So, let's take right here is Wadanahara. Her familiars are one step away. All her familiars' relationship are two steps away. Every single character is that way. Oh, her mom obviously is also, you know, best friend of this. Oh, her ex, the person she really likes, well, that's obviously her dad. It, you know, that's obviously his dad. It's, you end up in a lot of these really weird situations where everyone knows the main character. And that's one of the main points I had to emphasize is that the witch is the main character of this game. Everything revolves around her in one way or another. And that's kind of the problem. So I have to... So this relationship system, hopefully, going to allow people to really use that to a great effect. As they are going... You're going to have to be able to influence one another and know each other and generally make an ass out of yourself in front of your friends because you're an idiot. Oh. Hello, hello Maca Girl Sachiko. How are you? It's been a while since you've been in here. Uh, 
so let's form the Okay, okay, gum, okay, 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 okay. No worries, no worries, at least you're alive. That's half the half the struggle there. And staying alive is half the fun. So relationships with the core part of okay. Gum. The other E. Okagam universe. True. universe and allow the witch and the ma allow the witch to influence and be influenced by her by their peers yeah no I started a little bit earlier today for two reasons uh, one I'm going to be doing stuff later later when I normally would stream and secondly I have nothing better to do today <laughs> so here I am, streaming and trying to get a damn magic system and our relationship system working properly. Uh, when the game begins, the, narr the narrator... Oh, if only it was that easy. <laughs> Now, this is actually based off a game called Wadonahara and the Deep Blue Sea, which is a 2007, no, 2013 RPG Maker game. Very odd duck game, but very interesting in its own way. And it's, it's yep, you, yeah, it looks like you already know it. So, this is just the relationship sim, uh, system I'm going to be using for it, if we go all the way up here. Here's the title card. Uh, as you can tell, everything is a happy-go-lucky adventure and there's absolutely no nothing wrong. Nothing ever wrong goes wrong in Wadahara, right everybody? Right. <laughs> you also may, sound, may think that I sound a little bit differently. Yeah, I got a new microphone. So, bear that in mind. Well, the game begins the narrator will... Actually, no. The game begins. The witch will begin to establish her initial connect, her initial connections, and allow her and allow her familiars familiars to add more people to the ensemble. Or can't. The narrator may also may also add a few characters to this web to this web of relationships to fully to flesh out flesh out the world and the situations they are involved in the situations the witch may be involved in. Each, uh, let's see, each character connected to another has a relationship. Relationship ranging, f ranging from, uh, let's see, love to hatred. Ranging from love to hatred, which establishes 
how they how they feel about one another and how they how they will approach each other in situations depending on the relations depending on the relationships ships characters may lose or gain trauma may lose or gain trauma rapidly it actually may gain thing of relationships character okay characters may lose or gain trauma depending depending on the uh, determined by the actions of their of their bond as well as their own. Goodbye. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that. Hello, phone. How are you? Roboto, and yeah, it states another larger faction. Uh, change this actually just to larger factions. Okay, you may lose Okay, so our basic relationships with people. So, ranging from love to hate. Uh, range. Oh, God. Range of love to hate. Nope, that's not exact. That's not what I'm looking for. Uh, what am I looking for? I know uh, relationship stages. Stages. Nope, that's not it. I can see what I'm looking for. I know what I'm looking for. Pretty much, it's a. Uh, oh, uh, let's put this neutral in the middle. Like you have no strong feelings toward them. A uh, friend. Actually, what I should say is. Uh, hate, dislike, dislike. Uh, let's see, what's the step below hatred? Like you just hate someone strip. Ah. Different, dislike, blank, hate, obsession. Pretty much I want obsession on both ends. Just like you are obsessed with this person to a very unhealthy degree. So dislike, um. Oh, uh. Let's do annoyed. Friend. Uh, oh, wait. Companion. So obsession, hate, dislike, annoyed, indifferent, friend, companion, love, obsession. Different. The character gains Trump. Okay, actually, let's. So let's cut the obsessions for now. The character with this relationship. This relationship gains, gains trauma. If the individual, individual they, they love is hurt, but lose 
lose trauma if they if the if they are uh, if they successfully successfully help successfully help or save the target of their affection character with this relationship relationship gains trauma if their if their companion acts in uh, acts uh, and let's see companion hurts themselves hurts themselves or hinder or hinders the character's goals but lose trauma but lose trauma if they assist the companion, assist the companion, or the com or the companion assists them. Friend, and with this relationship, gains trauma. If their friend hinder, hinders the character, hinders the character, but loses trauma. If their fr if their friend if their friend assists assists them in a situation. This is actually kind of terrible, and I really dislike it. But I don't know how else to do this quite the way I want to. Why did you get down? Why are you down there? Indifferent, annoyed, dislike. Indifferent. The character there does not gain or lose trauma when interacting with this character. Annoyed. The character with this relationship. Relationship. Gains trauma if the if the target of their annoyance if the target of their annoyance uh, succeeds or defeats them and then but loses trauma but loses trauma if their if their annoyance of uh, fail fails at a task. Dislike. A character with this relationship. Again, this trauma. If the if the target of their dislike ever assists them it's them or is in their presence for too long. That loses trauma if the disliked character fails miserably, miserably, or su or suffers consequences. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I think something got moved around when they shouldn't have. I'm gonna fix that. Uh, finally, the character with this relationship gains trauma for being in the presence of their of the uh, being in the presence of the target of their hatred. But loses trauma. If they ever defeat, hinder, hinder, actively hurt, or generally, or generally make a fool of, fool of the, their target. Yeah. So, fun fact. Uh, uh, but loses trauma again. Yeah. So, you love someone, you want to help them a lot. If you hate someone, you obviously are going to want to absolutely kill them and make fun of them because they suck. 
uh, what I am going to do is add a side note. Side note. Are these all the relationships? Question mark? No. Uh, relationships are incredibly complex. Alexa and can sometimes lead to drama and problems for everyone involved. The core goal, the core goal of this system, is a simplified is a simplify, simplified method to allow characters to characters to quickly quickly get their web up and running. If the narrator or players narrator or players have a unique relationship such as being family such as being family declared lovers or simply being more being a child being being a child of slash being child slash parent of another Then, obvi then obviously shift things around to accommodate it. Make the game in the web of relationships your own. Uh, format insert table one by one. There, we want to put you right there. Yeah, it's one of those things I can I you can add like every single type of relationship with someone, but that's going to take five bajillion years. So here's some of this like really. Here's a few really broad ones, and like, hey, can you can I add my own? Like, yes, add your own, please, God, add your own. Uh, what I should do is I'm gonna make you go down, put you down. Uh, I'm gonna open that up. Guess what time it is, everybody? It's paint.net time. We get to make a table. Okay, so let's get that the way we want it. So, actually, I don't want to make a square. What do you think this is? We are circle family here. So we're going to add our basic circle right here, and from here we're going to select that, hit Control C, and Control V. Place a few circles around. Place one way out here because I can. We'll place one right here, and we'll place one final one right there. This may seem like it has any degree of sense or logic. It absolutely doesn't. So we want to add lines. We're going to add point lines. Okay, perfect. So actually, can we make that just one point? No, that's a little bit too thick. Uh, let's do five points. Yeah, let's do something like that. And now 
let's start establishing lines of relationships with people. These are completely arbitrary, so do not assign anything of value to them. Relationships. Nice, beautiful web. Oh god, okay, you're, there we go. Boom. Nice, beautiful web. So now we get to name, start naming them. We want to use. God, what? Do we have Roboto on here? No, we do not have Roboto. Uh, what's. Roboto, Roboto like heading. Fonts. Do we have Georgia? Okay, we have Georgia. So uh, we want to add. This is going. What we're, we're going to do is we're going to put. Ah, uh, here what we can do is we want to look up a name real fast. And uh, tie for Obviously, we're going to give her a completely uh, weird name. We're going to call her Nin Ninson. Ninson the IRS witch. Uh, we're dealing with incredibly small. This is a little bit smaller than I wanted it, but. Ninson. Gold witch. So let's put the gold witch right over here. Needs on gold witch. So her immediates. I will call. Actually, we'll call this uh, mother. Let's bump that down to 10 real fast. Ashera. Ashera. Gamma. Oh. Ashera. Dead. And we're going to want to add. Boss. Uh, yeah, let's actually do. Uh, she loves, and he views her as a companion. He views her as employee. And obviously, Ninsan here really likes her boss, who is the head of the magical IRS. Cause she's the gold witch. Tonica. Well, we 
can do. We're going to put this here. We're going to make... Apartments, uh, magical cur currency, Department of Magical Currency, account, uh, we'll call it accounts. Collections, collection, collectors, collectors. Front of me, sorry, I deafened everyone there. Oh, that would be another good. Oh, yeah. The Justice Department. Yep, Justice Department, collectors, and accounts. She really likes her boss. Uh, we'll call it a companion. to our companions and we'll call him we'll give this guy a name of I don't know um it's a good uh oh I know Torah and we'll put that under familiar Oh, actually, familiar. George, I'd have to make that smaller. Let's make it nine. Yep, Torah familiar. Mercy. Mercy. Familiar. Needs and disaster two familiars, and that reminds me I need to make line five. Put that right there. And all three of these guys are good friends. Oh, yeah, a uh, mentor. Mentor, and that also means I have to put the word student. Annoyed. These two dislike. These two are uh, oh, yeah, actually rivals. Oh, oh god. Okay, we want to make that go away. We want to put this that right there, rivals. are competing for Ensign's best friendhood. Uh, old Witch Nan. Former 
underscore student. Jacko. And obviously these two will be brothers. Old flames. Mercedes Love. Tanya, we'll call her a familiar. So you can already see the uh, somewhat complex relationship that's being formed here. And this is just me literally coming up with random names just to make things somewhat work. So who's Tanya most... What's everyone Tanya's relationships with everyone? Oh yeah, um... Uh, oh yeah, um... Veggie Witch... Yeah, the Veggie Witch Soya. And Tanya here is friends. With Oma, which is a familiar. In Carcassonne. Actually, Alamar. We'll call it Alamar, who is also a familiar. Familiar. Friend, friend. Friend, friend. Work. Uh, we'll call the uh, love. Yeah, Alamar here really loves the Veggie Witch. And she likes him. And she, they are companions. Former student, former student, familiar companion, mentor student. And uh, who's mercy related to... So let's actually go over here. Let's call, let's find another name, everybody. Yeah, welcome to the, uh, mind you, this is a very, dare I say, a very uh, long-winded way of doing it. Most likely, 95% of people, when you build these relationships, this is kind of just an example one, like if you're going to build a relationship, 95% of them are going to be boom, boom. Boom, boom. Yep, and then everyone else is going to be like, "Oh well, I'm Mercy, and we're uh, uh, we, we're with the old witch Nan." And Tora's like, oh, "Okay, I have a brother named Jacko. Uh, we also hate each other, but we're also friends." And Tanya over here is like, "Oh well, um, my mom's named Mercedes." And the narrator's like, "Lamau, you know, the, the obviously the girl that 
uh, girl likes your likes your you know likes the guy who likes your mom because that's weird and it's funny. And so it's like, hey, hey, the entire story started off because you're the new gold witch because your mom's dead, <laughs> the old witch. Like this, this may seem really complicated, but when you realize like all of these kind of flow together of just one after the other, like I didn't I didn't plan any of this by the way. This is just me going off completely, you know, off the cuff almost of just relationships and like how everyone kind of works together. And so it's like, oh, hey, does Ninsan here, our, our good friend, our, our main character, Ninsan the Witch and all her familiars over here, do they want, uh, what, what if they encounter her? What if they encounter the old witch Nan who taught these two everything they know? Uh, what happened if, you know, we bring up, you know, Tanya's friends with Alamar and Ulma, who are good friends with Soya the Ve Veggie Witch? What are these two's relationship? You know, what is this, what's going to happen here? You know, that kind of odd relationship. You know, what? what's going to go on? Like, this is a... I could probably work with that name somewhere. Like I'm I'm terrible with names. Fun fact, everyone, I'm terrible with names. Otherwise known as we have Tanaka as a name. Because I just needed a name. Uh let's see what oh. Uh we'll call it no, that's red by the way. Change that. Oh actually we'll call uh this person. Uh, we want daughter. Okay, there we go. Daughter, daughter, and obviously, Doru here is very good friends. Ninsan, and this is like one of her best friends, but Doro here really likes her. But why would you ever? But he's just a loser. Well, there we go. And what do we do with our relationships here? Uh, let's say. Oh. Nice. Uh, the uh, silver witch. Uh, quote familiar. Actually, no. Doru is not a familiar. But mom, mother, mother. <laughs> and Doro here doesn't like his mom very much. Actually, what I can do to add a little bit more drama to the situation. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Because what's fun? What's the fun of things if you can't add drama to it? Uh, hate. Of course, the Silver Witch hates the, the Gold Witch. Because you're never quite as good. Exactly, and if you if you as the as the narrator want to explore possibly that whatever happened there, maybe go for it. There's a there's dozens of stories already that you can kind of make work. And actually, what I should do is we'll call this uh, Jules Familiar. And the 
these two obviously love one another. These two love one another, and obviously, he, his dad really like, dad loves his son. But uh, actually, what I should say, not love per se. Uh, father. Uh, hatred. Actually, it. Uh, yeah. Uh, Doru likes his dad. Yeah, Doru likes his dad, doesn't like his mom very much. <laughs> Papa, Kappa, Copper Witch. Kappa, yeah, Kappa the Kappa Witch. Yeah, no, I'm very creative when it comes to names. Uh, Actually, now what we'll, what we'll do is caramel, caramel, familiar. And we'll wrap this up with father. Actually, what we should, which is a indifferent, indifferent, and a dislike. <laughs> there is a slight bit. There we go. So, there we go. We have our full. that down to size we want to do that control C and now we get to see does everything post correctly perfect there we go and what I can do, what I'm actually going to do, so I don't forget about this in case I have to reference this later, I'm going to save as not a PNG, actually. I'm going to just save this, put it on my desktop, and I'm going to call it uh, things, 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 things. Actually, no. Uh, Z, Z, Z. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. Uh, save things 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 so I'm very good at naming things there we go save all that exit out and here we go we have our nice list so already here apartment of magical current apartment of magical currency we'll shrink that down just a little bit so we're add the side note right at the bottom here actually what I should add is put that as normal text. We can put so already for anyone curious, you already have a story here. You have relationships. You have problems. You have issues. You have people who dislike one another, and you know you have relationships with the people. This is good because the more you have here the more you can actually make things happen. So you want people to really use this relationship. And as the narrator, you want to make sure that you have this. Because, again, you automatically have all these people who are now part of the story in one way or another. And everyone in this story is obviously interacting with one another. 
So what happens? Uh, you know, what is with Ninsan and Dori? What about these two people who kind of like each other, but kind of you know, one obviously loves the other, but the other one is like, I don't really want to. You're fine, Lamau. I don't want to. I don't want to deal with you. You're 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 a good friend. <laughs> what's the what's the what's the story there? Ah, uh, what I should say. Uh, uh, side note. An example. An example. Actually, what I should do, uh, for example, for example, move you down to about here. For example, I uh, here is Ninsung. Ninsung, the gold witches, the gold witches relationship chart. Relationship chart, along with everyone she and her familiars. No. There's drama, there's issues, and there's even a bit of conspiracy between between her mother and Annie's the Silver Witch. And Annie's the Silver Witch. There we go. Post this right here, and uh, 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 there we go. Ah, boom, relationship in the ensemble. Okay, so press that. Whoa, ho, 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 halo, halo. You're not supposed to be heading to, you're supposed to be normal text. All right, so I've been streaming for about two and a half hours now, so I'm going to call it there. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will probably, and I will be back most likely on Wednesday, as we did wrap up, if we go all the way down here to the preface, we did wrap up relationship strings as well as magic to and probably on Wednesday we're going to see if we can't get obstacles and enemies out of the way. Once obstacles and enemies are out of the way. Yeah. Hey, I couldn't drink this early. Wednesday, I will be drinking. Profusely. And so I drink coffee. <laughs> but yeah, no, Wednesday we'll be returning to our regular schedule program. Uh, but overall, things should be pretty solid from here. Once obstacles and enemies are done, uh, navigating the world shouldn't take too long. Then we have advancement tools and equipment, and then I'm going to put about two, three. I'm going to put a few sample enemies in there. But yeah, no. Uh, at the rate we're going, we can. I, I'm making a wild, wild guesstimation. The wild. Uh, Note that probably we may be able to get done by next Friday. Things go pretty fast. Uh, again, worst case scenario, we go till it's next week will be over. It's a very odd one there, Mitch, uh, Mecha Girl, but. Odd is what I do best. So, thank you all again. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Godspeed, good luck, and I'll see you on the flip side.